Hello, welcome back to Lipper's Fun Flows Insight Report. I'm Jeff Turnahoy. For the week ended August 20th, 2014, the conventional mutual funds industry saw steady inflows across the board. Let's take a look at our macro groups and see where the activity was. Starting off at the top, equity funds, again with $1.3 billion this week, uh, didn't do too bad. Taxable bond funds did even better, though, with $3.4 billion. Muni debt funds had about $400 million in net inflows this week. And even money market funds showed positive flows with about $7.7 billion flowing into them. Well, it was a pretty good week all around, as I said. Even though tensions in the Ukraine seem to be escalating, the U.S. seems to have its hands tied with ISIS out in uh, Syria and Iraq, and really no one real, it seems to know what's going on in Ferguson, St. Louis. So it's hard to know where uh, investors are getting their clues these days. We can see, though, that with uh, yields coming down and uh, speculation that uh, Yellen will remain dovish as chairman of the Fed, that probably things will go humming along for the U.S. economy. Let's take a look at equity funds and see where investors put their money to work this week. Again, with $1.3 billion in net new flows, it's not too bad considering we've got two good weeks of performance under our belts now. We've largely recovered a good chunk of July's losses, so a little bit of enthusiasm is probably in store for us. Overall, growth funds were tending to bleed assets, while some of the what we'll call Advent Guard styles, like MLPs, uh, tended to take in some assets. Uh, even emerging markets reflected a little growing interest by investors to take on a bit more risk this week. Those two groups, uh, as you saw before, uh, tended to lead the inflow parade for equity funds. Well, equity ETF investors were not to be left out of this enthusiasm. They allocated about $8.5 billion this week uh, to their products. Again, renewed enthusiasm for stock is probably the reason why. A little more risk uh, on the table these days. SPY, the S&P uh, uh, 500 uh, index follower, led the charge with $4 billion in net inflows. Not far behind was the QQQ, the NASDAQ index tracker, with about $1.1 billion in inflows. And the Spider 400, the mid-cap product from uh, iShares, had about 400, I'm sorry, about uh, $473 million in net new money. At the other end, the core S&P, 500 product IVV had about $1.1 billion in outflows, so kind of odd, you know, two sides of the same coin on that one. The next group to take a look at is taxable fixed income mutual funds. Again, a pretty good week for inflows, $3.4 billion. They've had good performance. Yields, of course, were the story this week as they touched 15-month lows, and that got people excited about bonds again. Uh, we saw high-yield funds lead the charge, and this group, they took in about $1.6 billion this week. Core Plus funds were not that far behind. Uh, they had about $500 million in inflows. At the other end, things didn't go so well for the Core Bond. As I said, Core Plus was doing well. Core Bond, not so well. Over $400 million in outflows. And loan participation funds continued to bleed assets. They were, again, over $400 billion in net outflows for this week. Well, taxable ETF funds uh, also saw inflows this week. Uh, about $3.3 billion, so almost keeping up with their much larger uh, mutual fund brethren. Not too many outflows uh, to look at uh, this week. Treasury ETFs overall had about $1.5 billion in net inflows. They were led by IEF with about $1.3 billion and UST with $420 million in inflows. A few scattered outflows sort of balanced it out from there. A uh, couple of funds, uh, as we saw before, the uh, core one to three year, um, corporate one to three year year ETF, the CSJ, had outflows this week of about $100 million. So overall, not too many funds showing outflows this week. Uh, the next group to take a look at is municipal debt funds. They, again, had about $400 million in inflows this week. Um, good, what we're calling good numbers for them after two weeks of uh, inflows which came after that uh, aberration three weeks ago with you know a couple million dollars flow flowing out of them. So investors have kind of turned things around in, as far as their opinion on municipal debt funds. Good performance, as we said, it was led by munis intermediate municipal debt funds. Uh, they had inflows this week of about $100 million, and uh, high-yield municipal debt funds uh, led the way with $335 million in net new flows. Uh, they've been leading the way for municipal debt fund investors all of this year. 
The final group to take a look at is money market funds. Again, about $7.7 billion in flows this week, nothing uh, too extreme in either direction. Uh, this marks three consecutive weeks of inflows, and again, institutions are leading the way. They uh, added about $8.2 billion this week, and retail investors withdrew about $500 million net. Interesting note here is that oh, back in July, the SEC uh, voted to install some new rules on money market funds, and that seemed to be favorable to government money market funds this week of that $8.2 billion that institutions allocated. Fully seven and a half went to institutional government money market funds. So we'll keep an eye, our eyes on that to see if it becomes a trend over the next several weeks and eventually months as this two-year reform period starts to kick in. Well, that'll wrap it up for this week's flows analysis. Join us next week or online anytime at lipperusfundflows.com. Thanks for watching.